to do interviews. It, it's funny, every time you think, oh, the, the hoopla is dying down, it, it starts up again. After I was on Millionaire, I was confronted with that old adage from Andy Warhol that in the future everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. But it's been a lot more than 15 minutes. Uh, it was like Doug had a vision, you know. <laughs> 15 minutes thing doesn't seem to apply in terms of who wants to be a millionaire. I used to uh, sneer at popular culture, but now I'm a, a pop culture icon. Uh, hi, Dad. Hi. Um, I don't really need your help, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm gonna win the million dollars. <laughs> I had no clue that it was going to have this kind of a, a reaction. I mean, that it was going to be on magazines, newspapers, Saturday Night Live. I mean, let's just forget about that. That's not even possible. Yeah, 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 say it, say it, yeah. Live from New York, it's Saturday Night! I didn't recognize a lot, actually. It's his Gilroy is a pretty small town. A millionaire Joe Trailer, Joe Trailer millionaire. Uh, yeah, I could get used to that. <laughs> He's a nice guy, and sometimes nice guys just don't come out on top. Joe losing his dad at a very young age and things, and his brother and having cerebral palsy. I mean, sometimes our lives kind of looked like a soap opera. So a lot of people said that it made them feel like good things do happen to good people. It doesn't seem like a long time. They told us it wouldn't, even though we'd be here all day. Time flies by. It's 45 minutes to showtime, and for Scott and the other contestants, those far-off dreams of fortune are rapidly coming within reach. As they get touched up, they reflect on the lessons of the day. It was informative. It um, put me at ease a little bit. Um, but once I started practicing a little bit, I got nervous again. I think I feel more confident. Quite calm, quite collected, ready to go. Contestants and their individual producers take one last moment to go over their background information for Regis. So that's why we encourage you to chat and have a conversation with Regis. Feel free to speak about whatever you'd like to speak about. Worst job serving yogurt in L.A. One served Linda Carlisle. Wood served Schwarzenegger when he tried to cut the line. Scott and the rest of the group find their own ways to stay relaxed and focused. Well, I'm nervous. I'm trying to think of things to calm myself down, think of other things and so on. But I'm enjoying myself and it's fun. And I spoke to all your phone of friends. They're very excited. They're all good. That's one thing I liked about this this whole thing is like it's spread amongst like a lot of people. It's not just me. Like all these people that are, were friend of friends are like really excited. Your friend is going to be taping an episode of the program this evening, and he's given as your name and number as one of the people he'd like to have standing by to help him answer a question. Yeah. Behind the scenes, contestant producers alert each player's five allotted phone of friends that any minute they could be called upon for assistance. Lots of fun, lots of energy out there. We're some creative introductions, creative waves, no duds, right? And that's it, guys. So go out there, have fun, have a good time. This is a time you've been waiting for. Last few right. things. Uh, I know you've heard a lot today. Michael's given you some advice. We've all given you advice. Your friends and family, your companions have told you what to do, when to risk it, when not to. When you get up there, <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot, you can hear a lot of voices in your head. Just enjoy it and have fun. Like we said earlier, this is a game. Enjoy it. Just really soak it up and wash all the other stuff out of your head if you have to. Like that. That'd be great. Good luck. Yeah. 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 Good luck. Good luck. Have fun. Nice meeting everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Come on, y'all. While the contestants make their way down to the stage, the warm-up comedian Q primes the audience and introduces executive producer Michael Davies. Thank you. These wonderful, these real-life contestants, these wonderful people who come in from all over the country to be here tonight, they're extremely nervous. This is not a good time to engage them in conversation. Please leave them alone to play this game. Which way? Trying to think of another thing, things that'll make me relax. Seven lights, go. With moments to go, the director and his crew make last-minute adjustments. Meanwhile, the questions are making their way to an undisclosed location where one and only one millionaire employee who must remain nameless is charged with the responsibility of proofreading all questions and answers, ensuring there are no repeats, what the 50-50s are, and how many A, B, C, and Ds appear in each 15-question stack. Every question and answer is then controlled by the computer and its technicians. Right now it's just telling me here to cue the question so that when we hear the, the director call fire, you know, we set up to show the question. At that point he'll say fire, the question comes up and it comes out of the monitor. Seven clean lights. Ready one clean. One clean, ready tree. Johnson on a roll right now is still over. 
10 contestants who have flown in from all over the country, and they are from Pleasant Ridge, Michigan, Mike Dems. From Noble, Illinois, Scott Taylor. Ready, one clean, one clean. You can never underestimate how surreal it is for these contestants to turn up on the set and have to suddenly face with the lights and the music and the whole idea of come to New York City. You can't underestimate how nervous they feel. Ready, one clean, one clean. Great three wins. And they announced my name for the fast finger round. I just put my head down and I wasn't even going to watch. And they said, you know, Jane Ovi, and I'm like, when Regis called my name, I was kind of dumbfounded. It didn't make any sense, and I just sat there for a minute. Every sense of emotional happiness went through my body like a lightning bolt. And I said to myself, I'm going to live the dream of 30 million people. The winner, Scott Taylor. When you get into that hot seat, it feels like you're in another world. It's unbelievable. It's a game that can change your life, but it's a game. So just take your time and have a ball. When we come back, Scott Taylor feels the pressure of the hot seat as he moves up the millionaire ladder. I think you've got one I've never heard of before. You teach geography and art, right? Yes. I do not teach literature. Remember these guys. Got it, Brad. They're back. You just won a million dollars. For four nights next week, Millionaire's Biggest Winners return to go head-to-head. -head. He just won a million Can they do it again? The champion edition of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. It all starts Sunday, 9, 8 central on ABC. It's 5 o'clock and the Millionaire Control Room comes alive. Five, five, four, five. Here we go. Boom. For Scott Taylor, persistence and patience have paid off. His chance for a million dollars has finally arrived. Okay, Scott, you're doing just fine. And uh, Sandy, uh, was it love at first sight? It was friendship at first sight. And then we got to know each other and fell in love that way. What kind of a guy is he? He's a great guy. <laughs> is he shy and introverted? Yeah, he's shy. He's come out of it, you know, since he's in his 30s now. He's more <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all happy about that, Sandy. That was great. That was wonderful. That was really cute. For $2,000, a race car driver is awarded what position for qualifying with the fastest time? Last position, pole position, middle position, flag position. The driver who qualifies with the fastest time is awarded the pole position. Pole position. Final answer? Yes. You got it. It's a pole position for $2,000. Great three with. And five, three with. Here it is for $32,000. What piece of jewelry did the literary character Frodo Baggins use to become invisible? Brooch, necklace, ring, crown. I think you've got one I've never heard of before. He's going to go phone a friend, so stand by. Right, right, right. Listen carefully, he speaks very loud. Well. There you go. We're going to call. Diane? Yeah. All right, sure. Diane. All right, our friends at AT&T will get Diane on the line and see if she can help. Hello, Diane. Yes. Hi, Regis Philbin calling from New York. I've got your fellow teacher here. He's going to read you a question and four possible answers. One of them is the right answer, Scott. Let's get started. You've got 30 seconds right now. Okay, what piece of jewelry did the literary character Frodo Baggins use to become invisible? A brooch, a necklace, a ring, a crown. It was a ring. What? I am 99% sure. 99? What story is that from? That is from um, The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings. Right. Uh, Bilbo was in The Hobbit. Frodo was in The Lord of the Rings series. So you're sure it's a ring? I am 99% sure. If I had a farm, I'd bet it. But it is a ring. Yes. All right. That's funny you said Lord of the Rings. Yes. You just hold the line. I'll let you know the outcome, okay? But I'm going to go with Diane. Make it your final answer. Say ring. That's my final he answer. He says ring. Just won $32,000. I'm going to play the whole thing. Ring one. One. Ring seven. Seven. Lights. Go. In the film L.A. Confidential, 
what 1940s movie star is Kim Basinger's character supposed to resemble? Lauren Bacall, Veronica Lake, Jane Russell, Lana Turner. Did you see the movie? Good job. L.A. Confidential. This is a good no. question. Very fun. You don't get a lot of movies where I ever just Um, 1940s movie star. You know, if you're going to guess, you might think about 50-50 and at least guess right. out of two. Looking at this guy's face right now, and he's racked with, like, indecision. Okay. Well, since I have no Just listen to what he's saying. He has no idea. It's a huge amount of money. He's now got to think about how he's going to play his last life last lifeline, which is 50-50, and we're totally in the drama with him. I'm going to have to use the 50-50. Why do we do that? Computer, please take away two of the wrong answers, leaving Scott one wrong answer and the correct one. Lauren Bacall, Veronica Lake. Yes. Since that's the only information I have to go by, and to me those two could resemble each other, I'm going to say Lauren Bacall. Final answer? Yes. No, it was Veronica Lake. But you go home with $32,000. And it's a good movie. You ought to see it sometime. Thanks, buddy. Thanks a lot. I was great. flabbergasted to even get it in the chair. Right back here. Right back there. I just about passed out when we got in the oh, hot I heard seat. I was up there screaming. <laughs> Congratulations, Scott. Congratulations. Thanks. Wish I could have come and told you, Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm starting to, starting to come down and relax. And it was quite a shot of disappointment at first when I got it wrong, but this is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot it's more money than what I make in a year, so... Mm. <laughs> so, um, I think I'm going to feel better and better. As I go along, I think I'm going to be happier and feel better as we, as we go along. Oh, it's nice to see somebody that was in your group, you know, actually get up there and get a chance. Well, I enjoyed it. I hope we had a good time. That was great. Hope you had fun. We'll get you downstairs, uh, the van's waiting, and uh, you are now free to move about as you would normally do. Okay, tell us about it. Thank you. Oh, thank you guys. Congratulations to you both. Have a safe uh, trip. Okay. I feel very lucky. We had a great time and enjoyed New York, and uh, it was a great experience. So, it's been nothing but good the whole time. See you later. Coming up next, Scott Taylor returns home, a local hero.